Welcome to Tiger Tracks, your home for the best of LSU athletics. And now your hosts, Jordy Holtberg and Bill Frankens. It is so nice to be back with you again alongside Bill Frankens. I am Jordy Holtberg and an early happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there on a very busy, busy week of LSU Athletics, the SEC Women's Softball Tournament at Tiger Park underway. Uh, LSU Baseball closes out the regular season uh, at home against top 25 ranked Missouri. Absolutely, Jordy. It's a big series for the Tigers this weekend. Still number one yes. in, in the nation. Yes. Tigers uh, tied with Texas A&M for the SEC West that League. That aches that won't go away, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> and just a half game behind Vanderbilt. In the overall race, just two weeks left in the regular season. Missouri has a very good club, great pitching staff, especially their starting pitchers. Mm -hmm. So should be a, a very challenging series for the Tigers. And meanwhile, LSU uh, hosting the SEC softball right, tournament. Right. It's already started. It goes through Saturday. The Tigers are the number four seed and looking to boost their resume for perhaps hosting a regional and maybe being a national seed. Busy, busy show. The voice of the Tigers, Jim Hawthorne, has his final baseball home stand. And Garrett Wilder will join us to talk about the LSU Sports Radio Network. The history of it, all coming your way on Tiger Tracks. And welcome back to Tiger Tracks alongside Bill Frankes. I'm Jordy Helpberg. What a thrill it is. Um, my good friend, and he's just been terrific at, at his job, but this will be his last baseball season as the voice of the LSU Tigers. He's going to do football and then basketball season, and then officially, well, i got to see it to believe it. i got to see it to believe it. <laughs> officially retire as the voice of the Tigers, Jim Hawthorne, James you look terrific. How are you, buddy? Well, I'm doing great. Thank you. I appreciate you asking me to come by. Well, we, we wouldn't think anything other. Go back. 35. You remember the first Remember the first time you put the headset on as an LSU Tiger? Play-by-play uh, -play voice? Well, it was basketball in 79-80. And, and uh, you know, I, don't, I actually don't remember the exact first game. I just remember some of the first trips that I made got lost in Nashville and I never heard of Starkville and uh, things like that you know but you, it was, you it was must great. have remembered that that left-hander number 20 yeah I uh, had a lot more hair back then but I mean you must have remembered him what I remember about it was that every time he got the ball he shot it <laughs> he never passed it to anybody. Jim come on now come on now <laughs> no I do and you, Jordy did a great job he was part of integral part of uh, some really great thrills he came in at had. a good time terrific I coached Brown was doing an, an amazing job in 79-80, and then that led right into the Final Four in Philadelphia, which was get silly and Philly. Well, I, I still have the yep. t-shirt, oh, wow. um, <laughs> but uh, no, that was a great thrill, yeah. and uh, so I, I've been so fortunate, really. Absolutely, yeah. Jim. Really, broadcasting's been a, been a lifelong endeavor for you. Tell us about. The, your background and what got you into this into this career? Well, I yeah, grew up in a very small rural community, and 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 uh, what, when I grew up, radio was it. I mean, that's it. That was your. We didn't have a TV, and mm -hmm. so to listen to the music and I, uh, to listen to sports, it was radio. And uh, so I got an opportunity when I was a, a junior, between my junior and senior year in high school. A friend of mine was working part time at a radio station in Leesville. Mm -hmm. And he invited me to come down and sit in with him, and I said, yeah, hey, this is pretty neat. I get to listen to all the music that I can't afford to buy the records, <laughs> you know, and uh, maybe I can play them on a radio and be a disc jockey and that sort of thing. And, and that's what I did first, and then got the opportunity to do Leesville High School football my senior year because they taped the games on Friday night. And uh, so that's 
that's how it got started. You wow. fell in love with it like that? I did. I, I really, really enjoyed it and, and uh, uh, decided at that moment that that's uh, what I wanted to do. I wanted to have a career in radio. Look, look where it took you. Oh, it did. And I, I've been very, very fortunate. Man. What do you remember about uh, the process of coming to LSU? You, you broadcast Centenary for a while, Robert yeah, Parrish, yeah. in fact, uh, during his era. Ten years of uh, Centenary basketball gave me a chance to broadcast all of the games to the greatest centers to ever play the game. Robert Parrish and Shaquille O'Neal here at LSU. And uh, so um, that's what I was doing, was doing centenary basketball and working for KWKH in Shreveport when John Ferguson came up and, and, and uh, offered me the opportunity to be the LSU basketball announcer, which uh, I said, <clears throat> let me get back to you on that. <laughs> no, I said, oh, man, yeah, of course. And then I did it for two years. and. Two years later, ended up moving down here, and uh, yeah, I was because I, I remember you didn't live here. You were you no, were I was in commuting back I, and forth. I, I, I That's a long haul to do a basketball game, and that was before forty nine. Yes, you know, so, yes. yeah, but uh, it was great. It was just terrific. Saw some great basketball. Learned a lot of things, and uh, then had the opportunity when I moved here in eighty three, I guess it was, uh, to start doing all three, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, ended up doing some some women's basketball too and, and um, got to be an integral part of the network once Joe Dean took over as athletic director at LSU and, and uh, uh, it's just been you know, probably more than I deserved but uh, I'm, I'm exceptionally grateful. It's amazing how it's grown isn't it? How it's evolved. Oh my goodness no question about it I, and with, with the, the, the big sticks that are on, is on that are on uh, the, the network and then you throw in uh, you know the internet and satellite radio and uh, now when you open your mouth on the network, potentially talking to half of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of scary, really, if you think about it, but uh, it has grown, it really has. You do that Twitter stuff? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Me neither. Me neither. All right, we'll take a time out. We'll come back with more with the voice of the Tigers, Jim Hawthorne, here on Tiger Tracks. We are back on Tiger Tracks as we continue our conversation with Jim Hawthorne, Bill Frank is, I'm Jordy Helper. This is a very memorable weekend. It's the final home regular season call for Jim Hawthorne. And baseball wasn't always on the radio. And then a guy named Skip Burtman comes along, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the very first baseball game ever broadcast uh, I did when Skip was here, his first year, 84. Right. I guess it was, Bill. Right. And, and so we started off, we did 10 games. Uh, and then the next year we did 30. And the next year we had them all, yep. and they went to the College World Series. That's right. <laughs> in '86, and uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's been great to see the development of uh, of baseball and uh, the continuing uh, greatness of basketball and and football developing, uh, you know, into the national power that it is, and uh, you know, women's basketball getting as big as it yeah. did and is, and then here comes softball. My right. goodness, you yeah. know. And uh, I can still remember seeing you up in that old Alec box, oh shivering, boy. you and oh Bill Franquez, and now you're in this palatial, <laughs> I mean, cushy <laughs> digs. Come on. What happened to the old tough days? I, they let me push the plunger. When they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, no, great history in that building. Oh, I, I loved, know loved some it. great, great baseball, but it was time. 
Yeah. You know, just like it's time. It's time. <laughs> you know, so, uh, <laughs> every, time, time keeps moving on. Time catches yeah. up with all of us yeah, eventually, yes. It sure does, yeah. Well, Jim, of course, uh, your, back, your background was in baseball. You played baseball at Northwestern yeah. State in Natchitoches, so you had a real appreciation for the game. Just talk about the, the art of broadcasting baseball. What made it so much fun? Well, uh, as I alluded to earlier, back when I was growing up, uh, everything that you got entertainment-wise basically was on radio. And so the only thing that really was on radio back when I mm -hmm. grew up in the early 50s, guys, yeah. was uh, baseball. Yeah. And the LSU football on Saturday night, which mm -hmm. is what introduced me to LSU football. So I listened to the mutual baseball game of the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's how I got to, to enjoy not just um, – uh, the game of baseball, but listening to someone ex describe mm -hmm. the game of baseball. And uh, so that just uh, kind of carried over, I suppose, and, and that's something that I wanted to do one day. For your last broadcast, mm -hmm. if you could pick either a football game, Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, mm -hmm. a basketball game, packed house at the Deaf Dome, or 11,000 at the box for a reason, what, what would you like to do? For my, I can't answer that question. <laughs> what are you talking you about? You made me go through I that whole litany. <laughs> I can't answer that. No, it's going to be bittersweet for all of them, you know. I yeah. mean, uh, this weekend will be the last one um, in the box regular season. Right, right. You know, and, uh, but then there will be a final football game, and then there will be a final basketball right. game, and uh, th it will all be bittersweet. And I'll have great, great memories of, uh, of all of it. And uh, so I don't. I, there's no way that I could choose one that I would rather end with. I got you. I got you. Uh, so I'm just so thankful to have been with all of them as long as I have. You practicing? Got the pipes ready for Saturday night? Oh, pra oh. Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't yet. But but I will. Uh, you know, as I'm driving home from work, I'll start practicing in the car. That's, that's the way. <laughs> so if you see Jim you as you're driving around, he's singing the national anthem to himself. Yeah. Don't be don't be. Uh, <laughs> Confused. Give him one of these. Yeah, he's practicing <laughs> for Saturday night. That'll be fun. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah I really am. And, uh, you know, I'm just I'm looking forward to a great series this weekend. Yeah. In fact, Jim, I understand Coach Maneri has promised you one last trip to Omaha. He did. So, yeah. He, he did. did. When I went to, and I, and I did, when I made the decision that I was going to retire, I went to all the head coaches because I wanted to sit down and talk mm -hmm. to them. And so uh, Coach Maneri said, okay, in that case, then i got to take you to Omaha one more time. There you go. So I said, well, I'll hold you to that. Yeah. yeah. Can and you get uh, Johnny Jones to get us so to the Final Four and get a championship? Talk to him this morning. There and, you go. Uh, he yeah. told me he's working on he's it. He's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to miss it? What are you going to do with of course, yourself? Of course I'm going to. I'm going to sit in the patio and drink what? coffee and watch the birds. What about those card games you play all the time? <laughs> well, that might happen. Too. It might happen, too. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I tell you what, uh, this won't be the last time we have you on, but uh, we certainly do appreciate it. Enjoy. Uh, the box this weekend. I'm looking forward to it, and, and thanks. Uh, you guys have been a big part of what I've done. Bill and I sat there and watched the Warren Morris home run, and yeah. you and I watched yeah. you play. Forever. We worked together, so yeah. uh, those are all great uh, memories that I'll cherish. Well, it's been fun. Thank Enjoy you. it. Enjoy the weekend. Appreciate it. And he'll sing the national anthem great. He promised. Uh, LSU Sports Radio Network, a little history coming up with a special guest in-house when we return to Tiger Tracks. Tiger Tracks on CST is being brought to you by Capital One Bank, the official bank of all things Louisiana. And by Louisiana Propane Dealers. Get up to $1,200 in rebates on propane accessories. Find out how at louisianapropane.com. Welcome back to Tiger Tracks. We just heard from Jim and now Garrett Walver. 
Garrett in person? God, good to see you. How are you? You too. Thanks for having me, Jordan. Well, you had a chance to research this LSU Sports Radio Network that goes back a long way and has grown exponentially in time. Really got consolidated in the 40s and 50s. And when you hear those old calls, Jordy, you know, you were part of that. Bill was part of that. It just brings you right back in time. Yes, indeed. All right, let's take a look at the origins of the LSU Sports Radio Network brought to you by Garrett Walbert. Wow. For more than 80 years, the LSU Sports Radio Network has broadcast Tiger Athletics across the southeastern United States. From championship games and Final Fours to the College World Series in Omaha, the network has been present for the most thrilling victories in LSU history. Names like John Ferguson and Jim Hawthorne have become as memorable as the games they called. Now in his 32nd year as the voice of the Tigers, Hawthorne knew he was replacing a legend when John Ferguson offered him the position. That was when uh, I got involved, moved to Baton Rouge, and, and went to work for the radio station and uh, began to do uh, work with John Ferguson for a year and then um, I took over as the play-by-play -play guy. I did color for John the first year and, uh, and then started, uh, uh, I just picked up doing basketball. I'd already done a couple of years of uh, 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 basketball driving back and forth from Shreveport to uh, Baton Rouge. The history of the LSU Sports Radio Network begins with the grand opening of Tiger Stadium in 1924. The campus radio station KFGC covered the game against Tulane, proclaimed as the first broadcast of a football game in the southern United States. The university's football fortunes would brighten during the 1930s and selected games were covered on local stations as LSU won two SEC championships and appeared in three Sugar Bowls. The athletic department sold their broadcast rights to Guarantee Income Life Insurance Company in 1946, ushering in one of the famed narrators in Louisiana history. John Ferguson, the original voice of the Tigers, called every football game home and away for the Louisiana Network on local station WJBO. Ferguson's voice traveled statewide via the 50,000-watt stations KWKH in Shreveport and WWL in New Orleans. Before the 1950 season, Liberty Broadcasting Systems purchased the LSU rights and hired veteran Gordon McClendon to call the games. McClendon was assisted by John Ferguson, who at the time was also a broadcaster for WBRZ in Baton Rouge. The next voice of the Tigers would be Charlie Zena, a broadcaster backed by the Ethel Corporation, who purchased the LSU rights in the early 50s. Zena lasted through 1954, and when the athletic department made a coaching change for Paul Dietzel, they made a change in the radio booth as well. John Ferguson returned from 1955 to 57, and the Louisiana network grew to 14 stations across two states. Well, KWKH and WWL are big 50,000 watt clear channel full-time radio stations, and they, they were part of LSU sports uh, uh, well before the network was actually formed. As a matter of fact, uh, as a youngster growing up uh, in, the, in the 50s, in the early 50s, uh, I listened to KWKH and to LSU football, and that was my first exposure to it. Uh, back during that period of time, uh, those two stations together were almost like a network because you could get about, I don't know, 32, 38 states, you know, at night just with the signal from those two stations. LSU welcomed the newest voice of the Tigers in 1958, just in time for the school's first national championship. J.C. Politz, who grew up in Baton Rouge, called every game in 1958, including the Sugar Bowl win over Clemson that solidified the national title. In 1959, with the Tigers trailing Ole Miss in the fourth quarter, he made the most famous call in LSU history. Billy Cannon watches it bounce. He takes it on his own 11. He comes back up field at the 15, stumbles momentarily. He's at the 20, running hard at the 25, gets away from one man for 30. Politz would move to St. Louis after the season and call games for the Cardinals, later coming home to Baton Rouge and serving as the voice of Southern University football for several decades. In 1960, John Ferguson began his third stint as the voice of the Tigers, presiding over SEC championship teams and Hall of Fame players until his final season in 1983. Ferguson became the play-by-play -play voice for LSU's in-house production of Tiger Vision and later was a key figure in the Tiger Athletic Foundation. During the mid-60s, the basketball program was fostered by their first regular play-by-play -play voice, Bob Peters. 
Tiger fans clamored for their radios whenever Pete Maravich took the floor as the pistol would become the game's all-time leading scorer. Jim Hawthorne started broadcasting LSU basketball games in 1979 and was handpicked by Ferguson. 1984 was a pivotal one for Hawthorne as he took over the play calling duties for football while also broadcasting the very first LSU baseball games on the network. The arrival of Skip Bertman created a new opportunity and new revenue streams for LSU. Uh, Southern States Network uh, put the first baseball games on and we started off with 10 and uh, then I think the next year we went to 30 which was the conference games and then in 86 uh, started doing them all, and that was a good year to do it because it's the first year the Tigers went to the College World Series. We're just halfway through it. What's coming up on part two? Well, we're going to turn and look at the Olympic sports and how those got on the air under Joe Dean. All right, we'll have that when we return here on Tiger Tracks on CST. Sit tight. And welcome back to Tiger Tracks. Jordy Helper, Bill Frankis, Garrett Walver, kind enough to join us as we uh, intro into segment two now. We talked about football and all that stuff, but the Olympic sports, women's on the radio network. Women's basketball got on early with the LSU Sports Radio Network. Softball got on in 1997. Patrick Wright, the voice of the Lady Tigers for so long, took some time, joined us, and really enlightened us on how it all started. Let's take a look, see part two of the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU baseball had only been broadcast by the student radio station, then called WPRG, starting in the mid-1970s. The 86 season marked LSU's first run to Omaha in the College World Series. Nearly 30 years later, Jim Hawthorne has called six national championships at Rosenblatt Stadium. The voice of the Tigers has made 16 trips to Omaha with LSU, calling all 57 games, none more memorable than his broadcast to close out the 96 season. The scratch by Mars in the pitch. Swung on the hit to right field. That's way back there. Way back there. Home run! Parkers win! Parkers win! Parkers win! It's a two-run home run! And the Tigers win the national champ! I don't believe it! It's first home run of the year! Holy cow! During the 1990s, the LSU Sports Radio Network began regularly airing women's basketball games and hired Patrick Wright, who'd been broadcasting the events for the student radio station, 91.1 FM KLSU. When I first started working with the network was in 1991. As a 20-year-old college student working at KLSU, I got a call from Jim Hawthorne in the springtime and was asked, would you like to come uh, work baseball alongside me? And of course the answer to that was yes. Uh, and I was doing women's basketball as well. Um, at that point in the early 90s, 
Uh, the network did about five or six women's basketball games a year, and the rest were left for KLSU to handle, and, and we did that. In 1997, softball came around, and it was, uh, I'd been doing a lot of baseball at the time, and by this time, I was the full-time women's basketball broadcaster because it was under the athletic department, and uh, it was branded to me as they were gonna make me the voice of the Lady Tigers, the voice of women's sports. Uh, so I was given softball to, uh, to kind of take that and run with, and then women's basketball. So it was kind of a unique branding concept that I was gonna be the voice of women's athletics. Runner at second, here's the pitch. Fly ball to left. Langoni's there. Langoni's got it. She got it. The ball game is over. Tigers win. Tigers win, and they're going to the World Series. Wright just celebrated 25 years of service broadcasting for the women's basketball program and is in his 19th year announcing softball. The voice of the Lady Tigers has found his work with LSU very rewarding. If you've got a winner, uh, they're going to support it here, and they're going to they're going to going to listen, and they're going to go to the games. They're going to watch the games on TV, and uh, that's one of the great things about being an LSU person. This is a great community, and, and the people are going to follow you. You're not going to get swallowed up by something bigger. LSU's number one in this town. In February, Jim Hawthorne announced his impending retirement after 35 years with LSU. The voice of the Tigers is positive the future looks bright for the sports radio network because so many fans still uh, grew up uh, listening to radio. And regardless of where you are, pretty much, because of the strength of the network, um, you can still always hear uh, LSU sporting a bit. It's nice to know that, that uh, in this day and age of instantaneous video and, and all the other things that's going on out there, that radio is still here, and uh, it's not going to go away. It, it's going to always be there. And uh, so uh, I, I'm very, very proud to have been a part of the growth of the LSU Sports Radio Network, and, and it's, it's always going to be an integral part of LSU athletics. Reporting for Tiger Tracks, I'm Garrett Walford. Well, welcome back, Garrett. Nice job. Um, and believe it or not, this is our season finale. It really is. It's hard to believe. How many weeks now? 35, 35. weeks. 35. Yeah, yeah. We hope you enjoyed it half as much as we did bringing it to you. Absolutely. I want to thank both of you guys. Thanks so much to Garrett for his great work throughout the year. And of course, uh, Jordy Holtberg, season number five of LSU wow. Tiger Tracks. I really appreciate it. And all the guys behind the scenes yeah. that do it. Uh, gee whiz, we, we couldn't do it without it. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, hope everybody has a great summer. Good luck to the baseball Tigers, exactly. softball exactly. Tigers, everybody else, golf. Uh, pursuing titles. Absolutely, track and field also. So it should be, uh, even though we're finishing this show, still about another month or six weeks or so to go of LSU Athletics. For all of us here involved with Tiger Tracks, we thank you so much. Have a great end of the school year. Happy Mother's Day and a great summer. We'll see you in the fall on Tiger Tracks.